Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. I've made it back home. Brad, I think most of the things you guys have been up to while I've not been here have been off-site. Yeah, we've basically worked on the clear engine. That is almost ready to go, I believe. Obviously, we need the car there, which I think is also there now. Countdown is on. It's not going to be long. Um, but by way of updates here, today, we're about to be taking delivery of a new team, practical, very usable car, a kind of car, I think I can say car. A vehicle. We, a vehicle that we've never had in the Schmimobiles. We have had visiting here, but we've never had in, let's say, the regular cars on the channel. And this is super cryptic, but you shall find out later. So obviously not a supercar, not a sports car, not an electric car. Uh, throw in other types of cars. No. Not hatchbacks, not saloons. Yeah. But let's Something different. It. It's very, very bright. It's very bright. It's it going to be not quite this. Lotus bright, but up there, up yeah. there. Anyway, let me quickly tell you what the plan is today. We are going to be taking the SLS Black Series after my big adventure with it, because obviously this car has been away for a very long time, having all of the engine work done and it's now running beautifully. But one of the things that we never quite finished was the fine tuning of the audio system, the upgraded audio system that I did to the car at Cambridge Car Audio. So we're going to take the SLS over, drop it off with the guys there. We're going to be taking the Lusso, which needs a run out because it hasn't been driven on our spreadsheet, it's the car that was last driven the longest ago of the cars that we can drive right now. That's so complicated, isn't it? The whole thing's complicated. So GT Black Series, obviously in the US, GT500 in a container, Clio V6 doesn't have an engine in it, old Clio, we just haven't driven for a while. So the Lusso is coming out today. So we're taking the Lusso, practical car for the purpose. Then when we get back here, we should be here just in time for the delivery of this new car and then we're going to be running our first errand with it almost immediately because one of the other cars needs to go somewhere for something that we can tell you about a little bit later on. So time is against us. Cold starts of these two, going to be fabulous. Let's get on the road. Right, so pop this because, oh, we've got filters in here. That's one to talk about another day. We'll leave those to the side just for the moment. We need to take a lovely SeaTech with us. I'm going to be taking this, pop it, I'm actually just going to put it in here for the moment, just because the car might be there for a couple of days. Always want to make sure with these kind of things that they're living comfortably. Blinking away at me. Yep. So, should I go and get this started? Yeah, squeeze back I'm past back here. this. I'm going to stand <laughs> right here and just, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to just like poke out the side of the car because I want to enjoy hearing it again. You ready? Let's do it. I'm falling over. <laughs> we have slightly squeaky brakes because it was just washed. But this is, of course, how you drive the SLS. Yeah. The right way to do it. Not on the road, but in here. If you don't drive it like this, you've done something wrong. Right, it's Lusso time. I actually pulled this one off earlier. We'll leave that charger here because we know we're coming back with this afterwards. I need to come up with a tidier solution for this. Yeah. Cables, anyway. Let's, Cable management to be done. Let's start this. Always a fabulous, fabulous sound. You ready? Yep. Blue Potsy, off for an adventure. Whee! Hi. I tell you what, cruising in this car is so nice, isn't it? You just sit back. I know, I mean, we always talk about it. Or I always talk about it, the seats. They're I love good. these seats. You just sit back and relax. And then you have that barking <laughs> out the back behind us. So obviously, since the last time you were in this car, I have driven it something like two and a bit thousand miles. Yeah, so we passed, was it 20,000 miles when we, did, we exactly. were in it? And then you've passed through like 22,000 <laughs> now. A few more than that since. But I tell you what, it's, it's such a beast when you want it to be. When you go into manual, obviously I've just put it back into auto, but when you go into um, manual and you, you, know, you, you do lots of this, it's this angry, shouty, noisy beast. 
but when you pop it into seventh gear and you just cruise, it's actually surprisingly peaceful. Oh, that's, that's not a good place to break down. No, that's not particularly convenient. And the car that was in front of us that didn't move lanes just stayed <laughs> in the left lane. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Monday mornings. <laughs> As you do. As you do. Anyway, I think we're going to get a nice acceleration out of the next roundabout. Hopefully. Does it go back to national speed limit? Uh, yes, it, it does. does. Yeah. I can see the signs already. No, okay. It sounds so good. Get ready for a whole lot of that. A whole lot of that. So maybe we do a little countdown. Three, Three <laughs> two, two, one. one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's I'm alright with that. There's not really anything to say, it's like, yeah, it's just, it said everything for us. Yeah, then we go back into comfort. Yeah, nice chill mode, pop it onto cruise control, let the car do the rest. And yeah, roll. Nice GT. But driving actually, because we've got the Lusso right behind us at the moment, we have the two dark blue front mid engined, naturally aspirated engined, luxury touring but very dynamic sporty touring cars. Obviously the Lusso has back seats, this doesn't, but kind of the two quite similar cars to be driving together. Both dark blue with silver wheels. Yeah, it's a good combo. It's a very good combo, and then we can all get in the Lusso for the way back. Do you see what I see? Tunnel, back into manual. <laughs> I feel almost guilty, you know, that's like 60 miles per hour, but I feel almost guilty that, I don't know, like I'm doing something really wrong <laughs> on an empty road in a tunnel. Oh well, fun and games, fun and games. So we're only about 40 minutes away, 30 more miles, until we get this to Cambridge Car Audio. As somebody who loves really nerdy numbers when it comes to cars, I think you can appreciate this as well. Yeah, this is like a special moment. This car currently has on the dash 22,221 miles and we're 0.2 miles away from Cambridge Car Audio which if I'm not mistaken should in about 0.2 miles click over to 22,222 so to be here on like a completely perfect run of five twos is quite fun we're out the driveway is it going to happen before the driveway or is it going to happen in the driveway uh, any second it should be. Am I going to drive around the driveway <laughs> until it does? How funny would it be if it happens like as we pull up to the shutter? What are we? 22, 2, 2, come on. There we go, 22,222 uh, as we arrive. We're here. <laughs> that is basically perfect. That's super nerdy. <laughs> That is the nerdiest thing we've probably ever done. <laughs> but I love it, we're going straight in. I think we go straight in. Pretty awesome line of cars in here being worked on. Probably gonna be a bit, um... <laughs> bit noisy. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, good. So, funny thing, go on. but I love this. 22,222. Oh, <laughs> Perfect, it yeah, don't drive it. <laughs> We've just been having a quick run through of the plans, basically to update the Android Auto side of things, to work on the fine tuning for the sound system, but pretty much to check over it all because although it's been quite a long time, obviously the car spent a lot of that time being worked on. So it's been having all sorts of things done with the engine, with the electrical side of it, with finding parts, with sourcing different things that now we can focus on getting the sound system side done. And then we've got another exciting plan with the car afterwards. So we're gonna leave it here for the time being. We will be back again shortly, but for now we need to go hop in the Ferrari to make our way back to base. Next up, the Lusso journey, which means loading everything up. But the good news is we've got a ton of boot space. Yeah. No do stress we, here. Do we mention why we have these? No, we'll mention why we have those uh, if it wasn't another obvious. Yeah. Next time. Next time. <laughs> I think we're kind of almost Hang overdoing on. that point, aren't we? You squeeze through you there. Fun there. There we go. Okay. Good camera work. Um, I've got too much stuff in my pockets. This isn't working for me. Keys and things. Yeah. All sorts of things. Random parts of windscreen mounts. All right. Breathe in. 
Back to base we go. Back at base in the Lusso and we, yeah, we may have forgot to film anything with this. Because we were having a nice luxury drive. Something quite funny. While you're talking away to the camera, because my mic is on inside here, because I'm in reverse, it's like beep, beep, beep. That's fine, so we're gonna have me and beeps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we forgot to film this we on the way back. Film. Good point, we didn't film a single clip on the whole way back, did no, we? No, because it's so nice for cruising like we've just done, we just sort of got, <laughs> we sat back, relaxed and arrived. We're home now. And, It's making some weird noises. That's called, you accelerated and it got hot. This is hot brakes, but. No, that's your exhaust. That's the exhaust underneath, tinking yeah. away. Yeah, that's what these do. Isn't it amazing how right loud here. it is? Yeah, right here, like. Oh, but you can hear it kind of all the way under. Yeah, it's crazy. It sounds like, so the first time Tom and myself took this out and we heard that, we were like, what's happened? Because it sounds like something shouldn't, like isn't right. Yeah, but no, I'm familiar with the sound from my FF from previous Lusso, but rarely have I heard it as aggressively as it's doing it right now. But this is quite funny because we've actually come back because in about half an hour's time, something really cool is about to arrive. Yeah. Kind of forgot that that was the main purpose of today. Coming shortly. Coming very shortly. We're taking delivery. Wait and see. Tom is currently outside unloading something that's actually quite cool. And quite bright. This is like textbook museum tees right now. Let's give some clues. It's very boxy. Yep, it's very big. It's pretty rare. Yep. It's a diesel. That's unusual. A diesel, but it doesn't sound like a diesel. Yep. That's another tease. Uh, um, what else? It's practical. It is a brand that we have here. Yep. It is a brand that makes more than one of the cars in this room, albeit not exactly the same kind of thing. It's got more than five seats. At least five seats. At least five seats. We can say at least five yeah. seats. Five seats plus plus. Should we welcome it in? I think we should, yeah. Let's stop the teasing. Let me go and open up the garage, open up the bollards, open up the shutter, and we shall say hello to something you're not expecting. For this one though, the shutter probably needs to go nearly all the way up. That's a first by far the tallest car in here. Yeah. So, get ready. You might be able to hear a grumble in the background, but we can introduce you to, get ready for this, get ready for the surprise, the first van in the Schmiemobiles, the Ford Transit Custom MSRT in Lemon Fire. We have the double cab, we've got this car with the decal pack, we've got the 20 inch OZ racing wheels, We've got that sound from the Max Horst. You would be forgiven for thinking that this has a V8 in it. It's a 185 horsepower, two liter diesel with the sound. We'll talk all about that. But basically we have a car, probably is gonna be locked. Yes, it's locked for the moment. Wait for Tom to open the door. As soon as he opens the door and unlocks it. He's not really helping me here, is he? No. Do you think he's gonna unlock it at some point? Now he has. We have a very practical machine for lugging stuff around, thanks to the team at MSRT. So basically it's a Ford Transit Custom, which is the, let's say, cool version of the Ford Transit. Obviously one of the world's most popular small vans with all of their upgrades, with the full pack in this unbelievable color. And they offer through Ford's SVO team, hundreds of different custom shades. This is one you can order. You get these from any effectively Ford Center that you buy the vans from and it's completely in-house. It's a Ford product, fully homologated. It's not like an aftermarket modification. It's not an aftermarket um, package. Visually around the front, obviously it's low with the new look, new bumpers. It's all around a bit of a beast. What do you think, Brad? Wild. It's so That's one word to sum it up, wild. Do you know what? This, this is bright. You look at that and the luminosity of the color is almost that like overwhelming level. But this is a big thing of color. Yeah, like it's a big brick of color. But I tell you what's cool, we're going so citrus here because this Clio V6, yep. GT500 soon. 
Amira. Yep. GT Black Series will be back. That like yellow green end and of the spectrum. Whatever else arrives and you if you end up doing more it's, it's been, colors. Yeah, missing for too long and now it's here. But do you know what's really important? What's really, really important is to do an awkward thing with the mic here because the man who loves the vans. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. He is. So this feels weird, but it kind of works, doesn't Interview it? Interview style. Yeah, Interview. I, was say, I feel like I'm on Sky News all the so, time. So how was your race? <laughs> well, actually it was very great, but Vettel cut me up on the last turn and then we finished under the safety cut. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> no? The race that finished under the safety car, Vettel didn't make the end. No, he didn't actually, so. Okay, what do you think of the van? I love it, obviously. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, the color is phenomenal. It looks stunning. But not only that, we now have a practical, truly practical vehicle. I mean, we had the G-Wagon, obviously, but you was always quite concerned lugging bits in it in case you damage something. It still had a lovely lever inside, whereas this is, this is a box on wheels. This is what it's made for. And um, Now we get to be to... men in van. Men in van. Men in, men in yeah, van. We, do. We, <laughs> we now get to be, you know, going out and about in a transit. So, um, yeah, very much looking forward to that one. And um, can't wait to get this out on the road at some Should point. Should we have a look inside? I was going to say, when's Lenny coming over? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you never know at some point. Let's go in here first. Back seats. Yep. Did, to did you the... just get excited about back seats? Yeah. I, I don't want to know. But it's not just back seats. <laughs> yeah, fair point. I don't but, have back seats in my car. But if you look, they're, they're lovely leather. They've also got the suede on them with the blue stitching, the MSRT logos oh, with cool. the World Rally. Um, Does someone want there. to get in and do a, a height test? Get in and do a height test? Okay, let's, let's go with this side. We're going to lose him off the microphone okay. now. We are going to lose me on the mic, but plenty spacious enough. This is so awkward, but plenty spacious <laughs> enough. You've got plenty of leg room. I don't really know where the front seats are in comparison to how far back they could go. But... Oh, it is a six seater. Okay, well, we've got three up yeah. front. Hence the teaser was that makes sense. potentially more than five. Five, five or more. That's Practical cool. thing. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is obviously we've toyed a little bit with the E500 that we've used for lugging some stuff around. Yeah. Um, we've, as you said, used the G-Wagon, but in the G-Wagon you still have that fancy leather everywhere, which stops you kind of doing everything that you might want to do with it. Um, but basically these guys said, hey, I heard you mention yeah. about a van recently. Um, here we are. <laughs> here we are in no time at all, which is super cool. So we're going to be running this for a couple of months at least um to share the experience of what it's like having a team van i suspect if they can hear me i suspect that we're going to end up falling in love with it so much or at least i am that someone's going to convince you do you need to that buy a, a van of van. your own yeah yeah not a proper this is i mean sorry this we is need a, another van a permanent van we need one a of our own. own yeah yeah 100 yeah, yeah, one that's on to be to be decided maybe we hate it and we never use it but i don't suspect you, you say we hate it. it you won't hate it no do you think Tim Brad and I are ever going to drive it? Or do you think he's just going to be like at the wheel all the if, time? If we can get the keys from him, then I think we might. But <laughs> getting the keys from him is going to be difficult. I'm, I'm not going to lie on that one. Yeah, this is... So that's what's happening back there. Tom's moving in. You've sussed it. <laughs> You've sussed it. Keep it clean. You've sussed it. That's, that's what the... Uh, yeah. I like the colour. The colour is right up my street. The colour is awesome. The colour's fantastic and I think it's a slight shade off. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> what are you saying, Tom? What are you saying? <laughs> it's a slight shade off from the GT500, but I think these two together are going to look amazing. It's more similar than you might think. Oh, really? This is slightly yellowier. Slightly, slightly, slightly. Okay. Well, I think they're going to be quite different when they're next to each other. Even you've, you've not, not seen, seen it. In, no, but you've not seen it in a while. I mean, I've driven 12,000 miles with it and I've owned it for a year and a half. You've still not seen it in a while. Anyway, this is super <laughs> cool. A very special delivery today. Really excited. And perhaps we'll see how this afternoon's going to shape up. It might be time immediately for errand number one. In the background, the E500 just started up, which probably couldn't be heard on our mics. Probably not, but we can hear it. Anyway, we can hear it because Tom's pulling that out because the plan is for you guys to take the E500 off to Dub Customs. Now, at the moment, you can't actually take the van, but we'll get to that. So probably the Cooper is going to be called into action. Before we get too far, though, just want to quickly shout out that we have a few more of the Tarmac Works Mini GT models, the Ford GT and the Taycan Turbo S, plus we have the Tarmac G63s. So I'll pop the link to those down below and you can grab one of them before they're all gone. Plus there's another maybe to come to the collection before too long as well, which we're quite excited about. So stay tuned, check those out. Um, for the moment, I think probably I'm going to leave you guys on that side of it and um, 
we'll get the Cupra ready for you to jump out with. So Tom's already gone. I've got to find a key. You've got to find a key and play a bit of catch up. Yes, First I do. First off, actually, you've got to unplug this. Yeah, unlock. Ch charging life. I think it's already done, so I don't yeah. need to actually. Green light, do just unplug. Which means it's fully charged, which is good. 100%, nearly 300 miles range. Thanks to RC Tech Charge Storm. That We're actually be. very lucky that we pre agreed a electricity rate a year ago. So this is actually, right now, quite an yeah. efficient way of going about life. Some of the charges out in public are getting they're, expensive. They're almost, I think they're almost the same price as petrol in most places. But the advantage of having a home charger, like if you had one actually at your home, is that you can charge overnight. You can set it yep. to yep. low charge times. Which this works well for us because we come in and then charge it throughout the day and then go home, etc. And when you get back in a couple of hours time, we'll plug it back in again. Perfect. Unless I take it. Hmm? Unless I take it. Unless you take it. Who knows? And just go home with it. It works. All right, let me come get this for you. Cool. Cooper on the move. Up we go. It's like watch out for Tom's cleaning stuff. Yeah. That were at slow speeds. I have arrived at Dub and we have an E500 here waiting for us. Well, waiting to go inside. And the reason why it's here, we may have had a little whoopsie when uh, we were putting things in the back. So there's our rear plate. That Tom McCard who made me do it. Um, when we folded the seats down, which we hadn't done before, we had to figure it out. Uh, I say we, I figured out and yeah, I don't know if Tim's blaming me for it, but as these are folded down, these are meant to fold out the way. One of them didn't fold out the way. And we now have a rip on the lever here on the sort of pull down armrest, which isn't great. And a bit of a broken seatbelt buckle. So we need to basically source new one of these. Dub trim down here at Dub Customs are going to fix up this for us. So that will be looking all nice and brand new. And then the 500 can come home. But for now, it needs to be here because, yeah, bit of a bit of an accident when trying to put things in the back and use it as the van that we kind of bought it for. But obviously, we now have a transit for a few months, so that can be used for van stuff instead of this. Um, yeah, that is now here, ready to be sorted out. And over there, we have the Cupra ready to take us back home. So, yeah, buy 500. And the obligatory clip of original Clio, the poor thing in the corner. We need to rescue this pretty soon, like ASAP. A few minutes later. In barn two, in a second, we're gonna take a look at something else that has arrived here, but we're gonna have an update on, do we call it Tom's table? Tom's table, and we're back by the way. Oh yeah, you're back. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention yeah, that. Fast forward a bit. Tom's table. Not too much has happened here. It, I've had some calls and emails. It's currently called Tom's table but it will have a name and a use fairly soon. So the reason we're having a quick update with this now is that obviously a little bit of the progress has been shown um, and we have the tabletops as well, which Tom has now been painting. And the purpose for this is probably gonna be in the next video, but I think a few people had talked about whether it was stable enough, which depends on the purpose. And for the purpose, it is definitely stable enough. And this is where I have to do the microphone okay, thing so again. We're going back to interview, are we? Interview mode. Hello. How have, you, how have you affixed the table, Tom? Well, the table is affixed with a variety of screws and um, some really good glue. What is this really good glue called? <clears throat> it's called sticks like, I'm not gonna say that word. There we go. So for everyone thinking it wasn't quite solid <laughs> enough and it needed some extra supports on the legs, we're good. He's, he's, completely for he's completely forgetting, I'm forgetting, that without the microphone, it's kind of echoey and weird to hear us in here. Anyway, I'm doing, I'm doing a bad job at this. I'm doing a very bad job. Let me delicately place this back here. There we go. Are we doing it? What? I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> There'll be an update with this soon, and you'll understand what it's all about, and we'll get to that. For now, let's come over here, Brad. And I'm on a new car. Scooter. Yeah, that was my transport up here. New Clio? Fits Clio. We've got enough Clios. Dub Customs TBRT350, which is actually a car that will have been in so many of the videos I've filmed at Dub, at the old location, at the new location, and plenty more. And it's come here basically because we're looking after it safely, securely, cleanly, 
out of the way because they've got some works going on and didn't have somewhere to put it and we have some safe space and we have a lot of cars here at the moment that aren't mine and that might be a full update as well i think it might have to be this is really quite a cool thing obviously i would have liked a new tvr but not entirely sure that's happening oh the, the comments are going to be where is that yeah, where's certain the, tvr which where's the new griffith where's the new griffith griffith your guys I, I don't know i would love it to come but yeah i'm kind of assuming it's not going to you anyway. guys wondering tim is also wondering where it is yeah we're all wondering for the time being we have this little thing here which was not in very good condition when the dub boys started working on it they've put a lot of blood sweat and tears into making this and it still needs a bit more to get it finished but it's chilling with us for the time being so that's kind of fun um and looks nice maybe we'll take it to the other side at some point i don't know but next update will be with what that is about and all shall be explained I actually did a thing you did a thing it's a big old table it's a very specifically sized table has <laughs> tom actually got the measurements right I don't know yet, let's find out. <laughs> I don't know if they heard what I just asked, but... Oh yeah, true. Captions. <laughs> Tom said, has he actually got the measurements right? That one's right. What is it? Halfway there. I can't see yet. Oh. Well, maybe I can. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Give him that one. It's pretty good. That was loud. And now I go and damage the paint on the top. Um, so we've got the three tabletop pieces, we need to shuffle them around, work out how to bolt them down, get this affixed, and then the hard bit is getting this to that side. That's easy. No, that's not that hard. Forklift. How heavy do you think this is? I'm an expert with a forklift now. I'd say 30 kilos. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's quite heavy. <laughs> Strong man over there thinks it's 30 kilos. Forklift. I'd say it's about 30 kilos. Forklift. Something like that. We'll put it on top of the E500. Oh no, we don't have the E500, <laughs> we just dropped it off. We've got a transit. <laughs> Guys, it's not even late. We've got a transit. We'll just we'll use our. We can't fit in the transit. That, Ooh. That's actually that's not a bad idea. Has he had a smart idea? idea. Because it will just go. Joke. It will go running down the hill outside and smash into Brad's other. Let's that. that. <laughs> not do that. Here we see a wild shimmy one fifty doing some filling. He's doing building work. Filling some holes. Filling some holes. Let's not evaluate, evaluate, expand on that. I've never done this before in my life. I have no idea if that's right or wrong. That's not very good. It's not terrible. But it will be sanded down afterwards and smoothed and flattened and painted. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Because chances are you're never going to see any of this anyway. Mm, so there's an extra hole here. What is happened there? there? Oh, an extra hole is there? I thought mm. I'd give you an extra hole to fill seeing as you enjoy it so much. You guys are awful. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've got some things we can say off camera. He's gone to, he's gone to get the uh, spirit level. This hole is too big. Well, that's not bad. It's pretty wonky. But what about the other way around? What do you mean? Oh, right. hang on. This. Well, we're back around to this side with our bright green. It's, it's actually really funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's just so... It, it's, it's Lotus Elise esque vibes obviously not quite as bright but I it's because of the size of it the elise on a trailer behind this would be cool that anything be bright on the trailer gc500 when that arrives maybe i can't wait to see what the difference of those two colors is going to be anyway we haven't yet had our first outing with this we're going to have that quite soon i hope but for the time being it is a super cool thing to have here looking forward to a little bit of living with the van although i suspect as we said earlier that tom is going to spend most of the time driving this thing I don't think we expect. No. We, we know. Basically, Tom's going to drive this. You'll drive the Cupra a lot with your Arbath, and I'll drive the SF90. That's not bad. Plan. Done. Anyway, epic. Huge, huge thanks to MSRT, who reached out to set this up. Obviously, the Ford Transit Custom MSRT comes with all of these lovely mods. In fact, it even has a little cheat sheet here. Is it unlocked at the moment? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let me grab the cheat sheet. Cheat it's sheet, always, let's go. Cheat sheet through the specs. It's always fun to have a look at these. No, I'm just going to show it so you oh. can like, look at it all. Basically, standard Ford spec. It's pretty high, you know, by Xenon's latest Sync 3 system, all the nice stuff that you'd like. And then this is the MSRT set. Are these 18s? Or are these 20s on this? These are bigger. I think they're 20. They, 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 wait, hold on. 
they're freshly tire shined. Ah, uh, what are we? <laughs> 20. Oh, so they've got 20s. 24540 R20. Cool. So we do have 20s. So I guess this is standard MSRT spec. Yeah, but lots of options. Yeah, exhaust, with exhaust, <laughs> wide with bodies exhaust. and yeah. But like, look how wide this is on this front bumper. It's quite funny actually, Just isn't it? Boom. All of the branded details like the floor mats. That's fun. So above the steering wheel up here, you have a USB charger and a 12 volt. That must be for like a sat nav maybe? Yeah. Like that. The practicalities of a transit, which I've never lived Hello. with. A transit. Transit. Done. Anyway, I guess that's it for now. Is that it for now? That's it for now. We'll see you next time with the update with that table. Until next time.